outpouring. What do we mean? It's important that we understand. Outpouring means to pour out. Many English words are simply a combination of two words. Huh? Either arrange, look at extraordinary. That is the marriage of extra and ordinary. When you add extra to ordinary, that's when you have extraordinary. It's a very straightforward matter. Some people want extraordinary, but they are operating on ordinary. And they don't add extra. Do you understand? The word itself tells you how that objective is going to be accomplished if you want to experience that. And similarly, when you look at outpouring, outpouring simply means pouring out. It's an outpouring. And one of the things the Lord has persuaded us and convinced us about over the years in eternity ministries is that nothing else will do. Nothing less will suffice. Suffice means to be enough, to be sufficient. Our need and our situation requires an outpouring. The fulfillment of the purpose of God in our generation requires an outpouring. The challenges of our time requires that there must be an outpouring. Because without an outpouring, there is no way to face what is facing you in life. As an individual, as a family, and as the church of Jesus Christ. Without an outpouring, you know, from God and from heaven and from the other sources where an outpouring is possible... Without an outpouring, there is no way to counteract the outpouring of hell. You see, when we talk about outpouring, outpouring in this terminal generation is bilateral. Both the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness are pouring out something. Are you following the matter now? Let me give you a quick example. Come with me to uh, Revelation chapter 12. I want you to see. You see, if there is an outpouring from hell and there is no counter outpouring from heaven, huh? earth will be overwhelmed by what hell is pouring out. That is where we are in the church, in many families. There is an outpouring from hell, but there is no counter and opposing and stronger and, and overwhelming outpouring from the other side, from the other camp. So where will victory be obtained? What is going to turn the tide? You know what it means to turn the tide? It means the thing is blowing this way, then something happens that changes the direction of that tide. In Revelation chapter 12, I don't have time to go into all the details, but when you read chapter 12, there is a woman that is with child, and this woman cried out in labor to give birth, and uh, there was also another sign, and you have a great dragon with seven heads waiting to devour the baby that the woman was going to give birth to. Read the chapter when you have some time, which I hope should be today. But this woman was able to give birth to her son, a man-child, who was going to rule over the nations. Huh? So the devil, the dragon, was waiting with seven heads. Imagine having a woman in labor and there is a dragon in front of her with seven heads waiting to snatch and to devour the baby. Why is the dragon so interested in this baby? Because this baby has potential. There is an agenda on this baby's head. This baby is not an ordinary baby. It's going to rule the nations. Uh, with a rod of iron. That's what this woman is about to give birth to. But the dragon is waiting because he, oh, ta, ta, he himself also wants to rule the nations. You are not following the matter now. He is the king of the nations, but now a man child is being born that is going to rule over the nations. So his own kingdom now is, it has an end, has an expiry date. So what does the dragon do? He is poised. 
You know, seven heads means if this head misses, this head, can you imagine seven heads walking in harmony to devour one object? The number one miracle is that the woman was able to give birth in the presence of a dragon. By tell her, you will give birth in presence of the devil. Satan will not be able to stop what God is going to bring out of your life. He will be standing and waiting. But what will be born will be born. Turn attack. What will be born will be born in the name of Jesus. In the different sectors of your life. He has no authority to abort the purposes of God. Rather, it is on agenda that will be aborted. Hallelujah. So that's the scenario. That's the situation. This dragon is waiting. And the Bible, look what the Bible says in verse 5. Huh? She bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Now, watch what happened. And her child was cut up to God and to his throne. So, you are dealing with the speed of God here. Imagine a dragon is waiting uh, to devour. And I want you to see the timing. A baby is born. Boop, boop. Boop. And the dragon, <laughs> the dragon is wondering, what happened? What happened? What happened? Where is the baby? The baby is gone. What took away this baby? See, God is a trillion times faster than the devil. I say God is a trillion times faster than the devil. Trillion is not even enough. Don't worry about who is outsmart who in this terminal generation. The matter is already decided. The kingdoms of this world, they will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ and he will reign forever and ever. That is the guarantee. So watch what is going on. She delivered. Then the woman fled into the wilderness. So even the woman, the dragon couldn't get. She fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there for 1,260 days. I'm not going into the eschatological significance, the end time, you know, prophetic significance of this passage. That's not the point. But I want you to see what the dragon did. So verse 7 now tells us, and war broke out in heaven. Huh? Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought. They did not prevail. They could not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God, day and night has been cast down. Hey, look at verse 11. You know that. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Come on, somebody, amen. amen. By the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Now, look at verse 11, 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Why is that so? He said because he knows that he has a short time. Verse 13. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. <laughs> Can you imagine a woman receiving two wings of a great eagle? This is the provision of grace. Grace will abound to you no matter what the enemy does in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be given something you didn't have. Something that the enemy did not include in his calculation. You see, when you are chasing a woman, you are not thinking of a woman developing wings. <laughs> you know, you see, when you tell people don't grow wings, this woman literally grew wings. She received wings of a great ego. Hallelujah. And that she might fly into the wilderness. Huh? To her place where she is nourished for a time and times, half a time from the presence of the serpent. You obey, hallelujah. You remember the serpent is dealing with the ground. I hope you remember that. 
Have you ever seen snakes that are flying in, in mid-air? They can jump from one point to another. Eh? But not fly and sustain flight. This thing is telling you something. As long as you operate where you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, the serpent and the dragon, they will have no authority over you. As long as you mount up with wings like eagles <laughs> by waiting on God, hallelujah, the serpent and the dragon will rage. Seven heads will catch nothing that concerns you. All of his seven heads will come up empty. They will not catch your life. They will not catch your soul. They will not catch your body. They will not catch your family. They will not catch your finances. They will not catch your ministry. They will not catch your future. None will come at your destiny. Why is that so? Because you have received the wings of grace to soar into the heavenly places. Now, I want you to now watch what the dragon did. So the serpent, what did he do? Everybody look at verse 15. What did he do? He spewed out water out of his mouth like a flood. There was an outpouring. Where is this outpouring coming from? From inside the serpent. What did he pour out? Water like a flood. What was... Eh? Yes. Yes. Give her, go ahead. And then why did they get the mic? Go ahead. Paleta. Hallelujah. Sorry, sir. I just discovered this week that eagles, eagles feed on serpents. Eagles eat serpents. And how do they feed on them? When they see them, they take them up. Yes. So the serpents on the ground can sting, can bite. But once you take it up, it can no longer function. He can't even breathe. He becomes disoriented. He becomes confused. And then the eagle now the eagle finishes. carries it away. And, yes. and he, he squeezes it by With the, the neck. With yes. And then that's it. That's it. And he goes to and goes eat, to eat it. Eagles, if you, if you Google it, you will see fight of eagles and snakes. The eagle will land like that. And then start flying out. The serpent will be, will be struggling and flailing. And they will take it up. Up in the air is confused. Even the air, up in the air, will walk against it. Then the eagle will eat it. Hey, you will sit where you are located in Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why nothing must bring you down. Do you understand whether it is the flesh or temptation or quarrel or strife? Paralita, frata, that family that is in crisis, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Clear your eyes. Something is trying to eat you where you are fighting. You are seeing your husband and looking at your wife, but you are not seeing the serpent. A dragon that has seven heads. Why two of you are doing Janin Jaka? You are doing, you are fighting. And there's a dragon in the compound waiting to eat your children and to eat both of you. No. So this dragon spewed out water. There was an outpouring from the dragon. Huh? After the woman, why is he doing this? That he might cause her to be what? To be carried away from the by the flood. So Satan is pouring out a flood, a, a flood of wickedness and iniquity, and now pouring of filth. The level of satanic outpouring in this generation is is terrible, is unthinkable, is unimaginable. An outpouring of violence of occultism, of immorality, pornography. It's a flood that is flowing like that. What do you think is going to answer this thing if not an outpouring from heaven? You need a counter outpouring. If Satan is pouring out something and there is nothing that is being poured out on your own side, you are in grave danger. So imagine the devil pouring out a flood at the church and at the people of God. And then there is no river. A tie. Hallelujah. And I like what verse 16 said. And then we'll come back to that matter of the flood and the river. He said, but the earth helped the woman. The Bible said the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Something will swallow what the enemy sent to swallow your life. Something will swallow what the enemy sent to swallow the church. Teria, 
He wants to swallow the people of God, but <laughs> the ground opened its mouth and swallowed the thing that wanted to swallow the purpose of God. Just like the rod of Moses, you remember? All of those magicians threw down their rods. You remember the story? It became a snake. But the rod of Moses swallowed all of those, all of those things. The rod of Aaron and Moses. Hallelujah. Their rod swallowed those things. All those time. And I want you to listen now. Listen to the story. Do you know that when the rod swallowed all of those other rods, it did not increase in size? By the time Moses picked it up, and don't forget, God said to Moses, take it by the tail. Take it by the tail. In other words, the fact that you are the one that threw it down does not mean you should come and confront it. It can swallow you too. You must respect it. So Moses, I can imagine the thing came at Moses. Moses said, no, it's me, it's me, it's me. Then he went to the back and he picked it up and the Bible said he became a snake. It became a rod in his hand. It did not increase in size. That's the picture of the consuming fire. The one that will consume and remain the same, unchanged. Now, all those magicians, they lost their rods. Did you hear what I said? Their instrument of office ended with that conflict. That's what is going to happen to those that confront carriers of the river. When you spew out something to swallow them, something will come out that will end your ministry. You don't know there are some people, it's better for the devil to leave them alone. Because provoking them will end this activity. Blessed be God forevermore. Did you understand what I'm talking about now? Now go to Isaiah chapter 57. 57, I believe. Oh, blessed be God forevermore. Where is he? They say, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. It's 50 what? 59? 59 what? Ah, thank you very much. 59, 19. Thank you. Isaiah 59, 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. Hallelujah. Now, and his glory from where? Everybody now. From the rising of the sun. Now watch what it says. When the enemy comes in like a flood. What's going to happen? The spirit of the Lord will do what? We lift up the standard against him. Do you see what is happening here? So the enemy is pouring out a flood. It's coming like a flood. But what is the answer? What is the answer to the flood of the enemy? It's the standard of the spirit. It's the river. You see, when the enemy is pouring out a flood, the heaven pours out the river. And I want you to listen. A river is more powerful than a flood any day. You see, floods are seasonal. Rivers are life. Rivers are power. Rivers are springing up. The water is not dependent on rainfall that just, you know, pushes something. No. The river has the life. When the flood has petered out and has ended and has, you know, calmed down, the force of the river will still be flowing. Full and clean and clear. Nothing less than an outpouring will handle what the enemy is throwing at your life. Throwing at the church. Nothing less than an outpouring. What will an outpouring look like? We will not finish this today. But what will an outpouring look like? Come with me to a scripture that is repeated twice in the Bible. We will read that and then hopefully now we go to Genesis and find a place to close there and pray. In Judges chapter 1, now this story is repeated in the book of Joshua chapter 15. In fact, let's read it from Joshua. Go to Joshua chapter 15. Hallelujah. So in Joshua chapter 15, 
we are told that Caleb drove out in verse 14, Joshua 15, 14, Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there, Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmai, and the children of Anak. And then the thing continued. Now look at verse 16. This is chapter 15 of the book of Joshua, 15. 16 now. And Caleb said, He who attacks Kiriat Sefer and takes it, to him I will give Aksar, my daughter, to wife. In other words, <laughs> if you want to marry my daughter, go and take care of some giants. I don't want to give my daughter to a wimp. I don't want to, I don't want my daughter, <laughs> if there's a little matter, you start running back to me, he say, he say, hey, uh, uh, Papa, Papa Caleb, come and solve problem. No. If I'm going to give you my daughter, go and, go and take care of some giants. I like Caleb. Caleb is different from Saul. You know the kind of bright price Saul, King Saul, was asking for his daughter? He was trying to use his daughter for vengeance. He didn't have his daughter's future in mind. He wanted to use her for vendetta against David. He said, if you want to marry my daughter, go and bring hundred for skin or skins of the Philistines. That means, kill the Philistine men, cut off their foreskin and bring it. That's bright price. Saul's plan was that while David is doing that, the Philistines will kill him. He didn't understand David and the power of God. David went and brought 200. <laughs> he paid double. <laughs> he said, oh, is that all the bright price the guy wants? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and he went and finished those Philistines and brought 200. But look at how those marriages ended. Because the father was not thinking about the daughter's welfare. He was thinking of, may God give us correct fathers. Fathers that will not you know, use their daughters for their own agenda. Caleb said, <laughs> I want my daughter's future secured. Go and kill some giants in Kiryat Sefer. So look what happened. Somebody qualified. Raise the standard high. Somebody will qualify. So Othniel, the son of Kinas, the brother of Caleb, this is Caleb's nephew now, took it and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, as his wife. Now look at what happened in verse 18. Now it was so, pay attention now, now it was so, when she came to him, that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. She said, darling, darling, ask him to give us land. Give you a field. So watch what happened. So she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, what do you wish? So of course, Othniel asked, and Caleb gave Othniel land. But now look at verse 19. Pay attention to verse 19. Somebody in this place. She answered, give me a blessing. Give me a blessing. Since you have given me land in the south, give me also springs of water. You have given me land in the south. Does somebody have a very simple translation? Read that verse 19 so you can understand land in the south. You see, the southern part of that area, Palestine, is desert, is dry, is the Negev. Negev, written, but pronounced Negev, is the south. Who, who, who has a version that, that says that? Just read that. Just read for me. He said, give me a wedding gift, a marriage gift. You have given me desert land. Give me springs of water. Thank you very much. And then he gave her what? The upper and the lower springs. Pay attention. Pay, pay attention now. You see, this is a situation where this precious daughter got married to this giant killer. He said, ask my father for a field. He asked. And Caleb gave them land in the Negev, in the south, desert land, dry, wilderness. Now, instead of complaining, because somebody can say, how can you give me this type of land? Because they were an agrarian community, meaning that they existed on farming. Instead of saying, how did you give me this type of land? What kind of problem is this? She, they knew that there was an answer to a desert land. You have given me land in the south, land that is dry. It's a desert land. Give me the antidote. Give me the solution to this desert generation, this desert land that you have given to me. You have given me a tough task. You have given me a hardened people to reach with the gospel. Deal 
millions of people who reject the Son of God and who reject the Bible, secularists, all kinds of things. You have given me a massive assignment and a massive challenge. I am not complaining, Tereta, but give me the water and the lower springs. Give me springs of water. Do you know that if you have a desert land and you have rivers in your desert, your desert is no longer a problem. Aksa and Othniel, they knew this thing. They said, give me, and something told Aksa that Papa has both. The same father who gave me this land also has springs of water that he can give to me. And that's how she prayed. And faithful Caleb, the Bible says he gave her the upper and the lower springs. So here you have two springs. One coming from up. And pay attention now because I want to reinforce this from Genesis and then we pray. There is the upper springs and then you have the lower springs. So imagine this desert land is being watered from up and from under. So the springs are pouring out. Put, 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 water is pouring out. Springs. And then you have water coming from up put on the same desert land. So you can imagine the transformation that took place, you know, after a little while on that same desert dry land that they were given. Brothers and sisters, God has given us a south land. God has given us the tail end of the Great Commission. We are facing a, a terrible generation. We are facing a generation that is hard. If you look around the world, look at Asia. Look at, look at, look at America. The Supreme Court overturned abortion. The abortion law the other day. And the, there are riots in the country. People are rioting for the right to kill babies. Do you, do you understand? They are burning down pregnancy centers that provide counseling to encourage people to keep their pregnancy. That show them there is hope. They don't need to kill the baby. They don't need to have an abortion. Now, these other people are burning down those kind of centers. Setting it on fire. Targeting people that provide counseling to try to stop them from killing babies. Do you understand? Both the president himself and several others are saying, we don't want this law. How can the Supreme Court do that? A woman must have right to do whatever she wants with her body. Nobody should tell a woman what to do with her body. Including killing a human being inside. They say, no, it's not a human being. When does he become a human being? Can you, can you imagine that? Somebody was telling us of a picture she saw of those who are protesting. And this is a pregnant woman. The woman herself is pregnant. And she wrote on her pregnancy, not yet a woman. That's the generation that we are called to reach with the gospel. Look at the other religion, the Ishmaelites, that are confronting the church. Almost 2 billion people in the world today, across Africa, some are militants, some, are, some, are, some are, are just the way they are. What is going to change the situation? Will this regular, normal, everyday Christianity that we are doing today, is that what is going to turn the tide? Look at the Middle East. I've been in India. You need to see gods, 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 gods. When they said we worship, you know, Africans worship idols. You have not seen idols. When you see idols in India, you, you, will, you, will, you will wonder what is this. There's one called Kali. Kali has six hands. You know, imagine a, a, a personality that has six hands. With one hand, she's doing something. With the other hand, she's doing something. She's doing, this is Kali. You have the monkey god. People that worship monkey and worship elephant. They, you can, they worship cow. The cow is a mother. This is the people we are called to reach with the gospel. What is going to change it? You go to Europe where secularism has, 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 has. In Israel itself, do you know that homosexuality and abortion are legal in Israel? Israel. I'm talking about Israel. Then you look at the church itself. Inside the church, look at the challenges we are facing. Look at the backsliding. Look at the hypocrisy. Look at the lukewarmness. Look at our pulpit. Look at our pastors. Look at the bishop. Look at the men of God. Look at the scandals. Look at the issues facing us today. 
what is going to turn the tide? What do you think is going to change the situation? It's a dry desert land. But our Heavenly Father has an answer to it. You know the answer? The upper and the lower springs. The upper and the lower springs. But it was not automatic. Aksa had to go back to their father and say, you have given me a tough assignment. This is the land I'm going to farm. Daddy! Me and my husband, this is our place? Okay, no problem. Now, give me the springs of water. Give me the answer. Brothers and sisters, as individuals and as the church, we must go back to God and ask for the upper and the lower springs. Go to Genesis chapter 7. Let's close. And keep that thing in mind because there are two sources of these springs which I am going to tell you what I believe they represent. You may have a better understanding but I will share what is on my heart as we wrap up. Genesis chapter 7. You know the story. That was when there was a flood. You remember the flood? Eh? You remember the story of the flood? We will not study it now. Verse 5, Genesis 7, 5. Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. And he was 600 years, years old when the flood waters came. So Noah, this is verse 7 now, Genesis 7, 7. Noah, his wife, his sons, and his son's wife went into the ark because of the water. And then um, all the animals entered. Uh, now look in verse 11. Everybody look in verse 11. Have you seen verse 11? Genesis 7, 11. And in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the seventh, in the second month and the 17th day of the month, on that day, everybody, what was it that happened on that day? All the fountains of the great deep were broken up. And then what happened? Everybody now, and then all the windows of heaven, what happened to them now? They were opened. So from how many directions did the waters of the flood come? Everybody. From two sides. It came from up. But even before up, we are being told that there were fountains of the great deep. They were broken open. So water was coming from under. Do you know that there is all this borehole that you are doing and getting water. Where do you think the water is coming from? It's water that is, there are water tables, rivers, oceans, under the water, under the ground. Suddenly, water began to do poop, 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 poop. Big fountains began to pour. Some people thought it was a joke. And then, rain began to pour from up. So, you had the upper and the lower springs. Huh? And that was what brought the flood of Noah. But the Bible tells us that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. How? As the waters cover the sea. How will that happen? You need the upper and the lower springs. These waters that came in the flood of Noah, the waters covered the, the earth. Can you imagine water that covered the highest mountains? And for how many days? Is it 150 days? Look at it. Look at it, verse 17. It says, now the flood was on the earth 40 days. The waters increased, lifted up the ark. It rose high above the earth. Look at verse 18, everybody. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth. And then the waters, you know, the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. And the waters prevailed. You see, prevailed. The waters prevailed. I said the waters prevailed. The river will prevail in the name of Jesus. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit will prevail over mountains, over high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth. And all the high hills under the whole heaven we are covered. Somebody read verse 20 from your own simpler version. So that you see the height. Quickly, quickly. 15 cubits, simpler translation, so they understand the cubits. You can do the math. A cubit is one and a half inches. 
So 15 cubits is what, everybody? Tell us what it says. Huh? That's 22 and a half feet. 22 and a half feet. Divide by 3 point something to get it in meters. Just like, say, almost 7, seven meters up like this. The water was above the earth. The water covered Mount Everest. Where was the water coming from, everybody? It was coming from the springs that were underground. And it was coming from what? The rain that was coming from above. Look at me here. I personally believe that these two waters represent, the lower springs represent the springs of living water that are flowing inside believers. Do you know that you are carrying a river inside you? The Bible says on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. He said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and do what? Drink. Then he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall do what? Shall flow. What? Rivers of living water. So you are carrying rivers inside you as a child of God. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So what's the plan? The plan is that when the enemy is doing an outpouring at your life, you also will be doing an outpouring. Does that make sense? Imagine that Satan is pouring something at you, but you are not pouring out anything. He is pouring a flood of temptation, a flood of attacks, but there is no river pouring out of you. That is the recipe for disaster. But apart from this river that is flowing in believers, I believe also that the rivers from on high, the rain from heaven, will also be poured out. That is fresh outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Because God said, I will pour out of my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. So don't forget the spirit is being poured upon us from on high. But I mean, you read that scripture earlier. But then the spirit is also pouring out of us. Did you understand that now? So there is a double outpouring that will answer the flood of the enemy in this generation. An outpouring from heaven. The rain feeding the river. I said the rain pouring down, feeding the river, pouring out of us. This is how the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And don't forget that wherever the river flows, there will be life. Rivers of life, rivers of truth, rivers of power, rivers of healing, rivers of miracles, rivers of wisdom, rivers of grace, hallelujah, rivers of strength and power, pouring out of our hearts, pouring down from heaven. This is the answer to this generation. And this is what outpouring is all about. So when we come here, we are set to pray. We are full of expectation. And when we go from this place, we are carrying that river and we are releasing that river. So we are, we are, we are walking in revival while we are praying for revival. Did you understand what I said here now? I said you are a living revival praying for more revival. It's, you are not a dry person that is crying for revival. Did you hear what I said? That's the idea some people have. You know, we don't have anything. Oh God, send, the, send down the rain. Oh God, send your power. That's a good prayer, but you are not empty. So what's the plan? The power is pouring out of you. The river is coming out of you. Lives are being impacted through you. You yourself, you are being transformed by what is inside. And you are crying for more from heaven. Did you understand what I said now? You are carrying that river, is pouring out of you, but then you realize that there is more. Praying for an outpouring means that we know that there is more. Are you hungry for God in this place? I like the word that God brought to us earlier. He said, it is not good for us to send them away hungry. Heaven still says that. This man is hungry. Do not be correct to send him away. Empty handed. Blessed be God forevermore. Would you like to rise up on your feet and begin to pray? You will have to take away every obstacle. You will have to lay aside every distraction. You will have to repent of every sin that besets you and kidnaps your heart. You will need to cry out to God. Any kind of strife, anything that is going to cheat you out of what God is talking about, you will need to put it aside. Let's pray, let's pray.
Somebody pray in this place. Prasinotse kushteria bratatatse. An outpouring of the spirit with signs and wonders. An outpouring of the river. Revival. Rain in the time of the latter rain. This is what outpouring is about. We are tired of trickles. We need, we need an outpouring. But don't forget it's a double outpouring. It's pouring out from inside the believer that is full of the Holy Ghost. And then the windows of heaven. Shenoteri Abrakatai. Fresh outpourings of the rain of the spirit. Oh, ten and not a trick at all, paratiza. Pouring out of your spirit, the former and the latter rain. Oh, the pouring out of your spirit, come down in your power again. Let the rushing wind blow. Let your mighty river flow. Lord, let it rain on your people once again. Let the rushing wind blow. Let your mighty river flow. Oh Lord, let it rain on your people once again. Is there somebody hungry in this place? Hungry to see God. Hungry to experience the outpouring of the Spirit. A fresh flow of the river. Oh, thank you, Father. Can we say to God, You have given us a south land, You have given us a tough assignment, You have given us a tough assignment, Father. You have given us a terminal generation. Oh, dry. Give us the upper and the lower springs. Father, give us the upper and the lower springs. Father, to reach this generation. Father, to reach this generation. Father, let there be an outpouring from on high until your spirit is poured upon us from on high. Father, then the wilderness will become a fruitful field. The fruitful field will become a forest. In the name of Jesus, Father, let there be an outpouring from inside our spirits. Father from heaven, let the fountains of the deep, let them be broken up. Let them be broken up. Everything that is blocking the fountain. Would you like to pray? Everything that is blocking the fountain. Everything that is blocking the fountain in your life. Let them be broken up in the name of Jesus. Shito, Trakamatayla. Brato, 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 
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, now, we are going to pray just one or two more prayers and we are done. But we will continue to pray along these lines as we gather in our different places. Right now, I want you to examine your heart. I want you to examine your life. It says, the fountains of the great deep, we are broken up. You know that what's there, we are things that we are covering it. What is covering the fountain that you are carrying inside you? What work of the flesh, what secret sin is eating you and not allowing you to soar on the wings of the eagles? What is it that is blocking the river from, from flowing full and free in your life? If you are interested in this outpouring, we must take away the stumbling blocks. Can I give you opportunity to settle matters with God? Whatever is going on in your life, I want you to present yourself to the Lord and ask for mercy so that you will not be excluded from what God is saying and doing. Let's pray. I want you to pray. Let's pray. If you want to kneel down somewhere, if you want to, every distraction. Father, in the name of Jesus, meet us here and have mercy upon us. Father, purge our hearts, purge this ministry. Father, purge our families. Cleanse your church. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, walk a walk in our lives that will prepare us for what you want to do in the nations. Father, cleanse, dredge the channels of our spirit. Take away every clutter, Heavenly Father. Remove every blockage. We humble ourselves, Father. We confess that without you, we can do nothing. Nothing else and nothing less can turn the tide. Oh, so help us God tonight. Would you like to express your hunger? I say, Father, don't pass me by. In this final outpouring, the, 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 the bursting forth of the rivers and of the, of the fountains of the deep. Oh, pre taikoi utoi kusu nana taika papa tekar braki kikiri isi para taiba mido ito zila chai. The fountains of the deep. I said the fountains of the deep. Hey, your heart will be deep. Fountains will flow from inside your inner man. Chito Raparaka Tyler. Fountains of the deep. The fountains of the deep. Deep, call it unto deep. At the noise of your water spouts, all of your waves and your billows have gone over me. Terra, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The tabernacles of the holy place of the most high. God is in the midst of her. Para kanatai, kokoro totse, pra takalatai, kalata, para, pratse, kush de pakye kikaria, a prana tandri kiki yisi prata tata para para pra, tu bra mingrisi prakatai, tela, it all selemene kanitai, pariana nandrisi kandrisi paratai. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the fountains of the deep be broken up. Karatai, karatai. And Father, in the name of Jesus, let the windows of heaven be open. And let there be an outpouring, Father, upon our lives, upon your church. Father, upon your church in this terminal generation. Father, nothing else we do. Nothing less we do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let's, let's thank him. Let's worship him. You see, Caleb that had the land also had the fountain. Hallelujah. The person that gave us the assignment, he has the answer. He has the rivers. He has the antidote. On a total tire. And if we know we told that, Father, we praise you tonight. We worship you. In the name of Jesus.